This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. It has been far too long since we have had Rob Friedman, Pitching Ninja, on the show here on Covering the Spread to Talk some Strikeout Props and Friends. We are righting that wrong for today because Rob is here to talk about his favorite strikeout props for Friday. So we'll talk about some guys who could uh, contend for the crown for the top strikeout getter of the night. And then also talk some MLB money lines I like later on today. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire. Joined here as mentioned by Rob Friedman. Check him out on Twitter at Pitching Ninja. You can find his work on Peacock, MLB.com. Com, and it'll be on Fox, of course, on FanDuel Sportsbook as well. Getting your own profit boost this year, Rob. That's awesome. Uh, it's the first time we've talked since October. So how are you doing today? I am doing great. And I missed you and your intro. Like that intro I goes mean, hard, man. It, it will never not go hard. Like I told you before we started, they'll rip that intro from my cold dead hands because I listened to it. In my fun time, you know, as a <laughs> as a as a diversion, as always, because it just you know it picks you up a little bit, right? You should have like your ringtone, maybe your alarm in the morning. Going, I agree. Yeah. We'll work on that. The the alarm one might actually be a good idea. I oh, think yeah. we'll I'll have some people look into that, see if we can get that uh, cooked up. And what we're gonna do is same thing we've done with Rob in the past, where we talk about some strikeout props he likes and. It recently, Fandle's been posting this pretty fun market where they ask which pitcher will lead the night in strikeouts. That market is not up yet, but we'll talk about it and talk about which guys Rob's going to check once that market is posted and try to get you ready for that uh, once Fandle does post it later on today. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. Two shows for today because we got Christina Blacker coming on later on to talk the Belmont Stakes. So to get that show right as it is posted, make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. Podcast and check us out over on the FanDuel YouTube page. Now, Rob, let's dig into Friday Night Slate and talk about some games here, talk about some pitchers and some strikeout props you like. And I think that we couldn't have planned this any better getting you back here for a Friday because we've got Shohei Otani, Luis Castillo, Garrett Cole, Christian Javier. We've got a lot of fun guys on this slate. So when you look at the strikeout props over at FanDuel Sportsbook for today, which ones stand out to you? Well, for one, I'm going to start with a not fun guy. Like, I don't know that most fans know him very well, at least, at least casual fans. Um, Merrill Kelly, I like a lot. Yeah. Um, I, I like his matchup. He's been great. And I'm taking him today for or tonight for uh, seven Ks or more in this game. Um, I, I just, it. yeah, like he, he's been flying under the radar, kind of a nondescript ace type pitcher. So, uh, yeah, yeah big fan. Yeah, Merrill Kelly gets the Tigers for tonight, so obviously a high strikeout matchup, and it seems like he's made some changes this year, Rob, where I'm not sure if it's like a conscious effort to get more strikeouts, because in the past, he's always been good at suppressing hard contact, and that was kind of like his forte. This year, though, it really does seem like the strikeouts have been a bigger part of his repertoire. Do you think that's like a conscious effort on his part to try to decrease the variance on balls and play and stuff like that? Knowing his coach, I mean, when, when you have Brent Strom as your coach, yeah, yeah, I would think so. Like he's a big fan of not letting opponents hit, get the ball in play. So um, I would imagine that that's been a big discussion going with, you know, elevated fastball, stuff like that to really increase the Ks because he is, you know, while soft contact exists, no contact is a little better. Right. You know, Especially for that- me, I love no contact. Like that's what I make my whole – living on on twitter and yeah <laughs> i i'm of the opinion that kevin costner set baseball back five years by saying strikeouts are fascist um i think that 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 baseball would have been having like this renaissance that it's had recently a lot sooner if kevin costner had not had that line i feel like we would have gotten to this sooner because strikeouts are i think the most exciting part of baseball personally like we heard uh, rob manfred talking about getting more balls and play i'm like no man I want strikeouts and dingers. Like I'm not I'm a very simple human. That's all I want here. I love you. That's exactly. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> totally, totally agree. Like I am cool with dingers. If you give me the strikeouts. Right. And I would rather someone announce their presence with authority than put balls in. Like it's just, I agree. Yeah. Okay, so Merrill Kelly over six and a half strikeouts is plus one sixteen right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. Any other strikeout props you're looking at for tonight, Rob? Yeah, I mean, I, I have to bet on the premier matchup of the day, which is Castillo and Otani, and I expect yeah. them both to go at it and K totals to be high. 
I know Castillo will raise his game. I know Otani will too. And I've got them. I've got uh, Castillo for seven and Otani for eight. Otani, yeah, we'll go into this a little more, but I think it's a really good matchup for him. He's had a little bit of bad luck lately. I see him kind of snapping back and and having a really good outing. Yeah, and like that Houston game, even though it didn't really work in his favor, he still got six strikeouts there. That was on the road against a team that is becoming a lower strikeout team once again. You know, they had a a blip at the beginning of the year, but now they've got some guys back. They're starting to get lower strikeouts again. So me personally, when I look at a lower strikeout game against Houston, it's not going to bother me that much. Now, one thing I've seen with Otani is he's throwing a couple more sinkers than he was recently and throwing fewer sliders. And to me, that's always like a, a red flag because sinkers are like the bane of strikeouts existence and sliders tend to be in favor of that. But still, he's at 7.4 strikeouts per game when he's been doing that. So I had some concern initially with Otani, but you mentioned the matchup against the Mariners. I think it's a good matchup uh, for sure from a strikeout perspective, not from a overall perspective, but for strikeouts. So even though there have been some slight tweaks that had me a little bit concerned, I think that being a high, high in Otani is still good. What about you? Uh, did those did those concern you at all, those tweaks, or no? Uh, it, it does. He's trying to figure it out now because... You know, hit it's a game of cat and mouse. Hitters adjusted to his sweeper. They started keying on it because he was throwing it so often. Right. So he needed something to replace it. I know he went to his cutter, which also isn't a tremendously high whiff rate pitch, not yeah. like his sweeper is, um, or not like his splitter is too. But I think the splitter has blister concerns, so he still mm -hmm. uses it strategically. Yeah. I don't. I think he's still working on his pitch mix. His pitches are still fantastic, and I look at it the same way. Um, I look at Strider's game last night, which was rotten from his standard or pretty much anybody's standards, but he yeah. still had eight Ks. Right. Like, uh, you know, as, as long as Otani goes deep in the game, he's going to get a lot of Ks. And they will let him go as deep as he wants. His pitch count, I'm always shocked at how his pitch count is given that he's playing baseball every day. They still let him go like 110 sometimes. It's absurd. What about Castillo? Because he's on the road here facing the Angels, and the Angels offense is fine. Uh, but like, I think that, he recently has picked back up. And it always seems like Castillo has like this ramp up phase where the velocity is a little bit lower first part of the year. But then we get to May, temperatures go up, velocity goes up, and he goes nuts. Is that kind of the thought process with you on him? That is literally the, the thought okay. process. I've seen a lot of really good signs from Castillo. I also think he's an emotional type pitcher in that he loves the big stage. And I think mm -hmm. him competing against Otani brings out the best in him too. And hopefully we'll see, you know, 100 mile hour heaters and, you know, wicked change ups and nasty sliders from him because, uh, you know, he's got it in him and he can do yeah. this. And you're right. I've, I've seen signs of that, you know, just being a little more consistent. Okay. So the strikeout props Rob is looking at for tonight. We got Luis Castillo over six and a half minus 136. Shohei Otani over seven and a half, also minus 136. And the Kelly one from earlier, uh, plus 116 to go over six and a half. Now, I mentioned before that FanDuel has this prop they've been putting up on Fridays where it looks at the pitcher to lead the night in strikeouts. And I think that is actually a fantastic and hey, it's up right now. How about that? What, hey, what about that timing? There? And same pick <laughs> so, I would have had. Love it. There. So Shohei Otani is a favorite. He is plus 240. And uh Luis Castillo 8 to 1. But Merrill Kelly, a little bit lower on the list. He's 21 to 1, Rob. Is that long enough for you to bite there? That is absolutely long enough for me to bite. As a matter of fact, I'm looking at this, and that would be where I would put my money. I would not be surprised to see him have a big K game. Mm -hmm. And 21. Come on. Like, give yeah. me all that. Yeah. Um, and I don't like, like, Glass now, well, he's got ridiculous stuff. I'm looking at the the uh, top guys on the list. Yeah. I just, you know, it's early in his in his return, facing a tough team. That's that's a big call. Like, I don't know how long they even let him stay in yeah. the game. Um, so that would be tough. I I like him over a lot of those guys ahead of him. I agree. And it's not, again, like you said, due to stuff. It's because of ramp up. He's still very fresh off the oh, IL. Yeah. You want him fresh for October based on the way the Rays have played. So I think they'll play the long game there. Now, one guy I did want to ask you about here, seeing these odds, it's a bit shorter than Kelly. So I might not get you to bite there. But Tyler Wells also has been yeah. a guy who has publicly said, 
I want strikeouts and music to my ears, Rob, when he said that, that he's trying to get more strikeouts. It's been working. Uh, strikeout rate across his past five or six starts is 32%. Royals, 24% strikeout rate against righties. Can I interest you in Tyler Wells at 19 to one for tonight? Uh, absolutely. You, I, I strongly considered him today in my, in my mm -hmm. K bets. Um, I've liked what I've seen out of him and it, that would not surprise me. It's just, he's facing, he's going off against some guys who can rack up a lot of K's and, and again, right. Otani at one. Yeah. That, that was, you know, just looking at, looking at it, it's a great matchup for Otani today. And, and, you know, that would be who I'd have as a favorite as well, but for longer yeah. odds, absolutely. Like Wells yeah. definitely could do it. Okay, so Merrill Kelly is the official one we're seeing some of the best value on for today. 21-1 to 1 against the Detroit Tigers. Can't hate on that. That is Rob Freeman. Check him out on Twitter, at Pitching Ninja, and find him everywhere else. Peacock, MLB.com, MLB on Fox, and of course here on Covering the Spread as well. Rob, it was a pleasure to have you back on the show for today. Enjoy all those strikeouts. Enjoy all the fun matchups for tonight. Enjoy the baseball. We'll talk to you once again next week. Absolutely. Hey, good to see you again. Absolutely. Thank you, Rob. Appreciate it. And we'll talk to you again next week. Again, check out Rob's fantastic work. Hopefully we're seeing some uh, Merrill Kelly gifts over tonight on uh, the Pitching Ninja Twitter account. Looking forward to that as always. We'll have Rob again uh, next week to talk some more strikeout props because it is always a blast for sure. We'll dig into some MLB money lines I'm liking for tonight here in just one second. But first, it is almost time to crown an NBA champion. And FanDuel wants you to be a part of the excitement because right now, new customers can get a no sweat first bet up to $2,500. That is $2,500 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. There's no better place to bet all the finals action than America's number one sportsbook, FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only. $10 deposit required. Refund issued is non withdrawable bonus bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See full terms at fanduel.com slash sportsbook. Fanduel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Arizona. 1 800 Next Step or text Next Step to 533 42. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777, or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700, or in Kansas, ksgamblinghealth.com. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In Massachusetts, gamblinghelplinema.org. Or call 800 327 5050 for 24 7 support. In Maryland, mdgamblinghealth.org. In West or New York, uh, 1878 Open Y or text Open Y. And in West Virginia, go to 1 800 Gambler.net. Let's talk about some MLB money lines for today. Can we dig up two that I liked for tonight's slate? One of them had moved a bit when I was glancing at it earlier on, but it is still a value for me. The first one is the Pirates. Their money line against the Mets is currently minus 116. The implied odds of that are 53.7%. I've got the Pirates win odds at 57.9%, so the gap there big enough for me to justify diving into the Pirates for tonight. Rich Hill starting here for the Pirates and... He's had some pretty serious issues with hard contact and fly balls. He's been throwing more cutters and fewer sliders across his past four starts. And in that time, he has let up a 43% hard hit rate with a 44% fly ball rate. So that's a pretty big concern, but strikeout rate is up in that time as well. And if you strike guys out, it doesn't matter if you hit a lot or if they're making hard contacts, they got to make contact first. So Hill's been pitching a little bit better. The Pirates facing Tyler McGill, the starter here for the Mets. And McGill still trying to find his groove. Uh, hasn't quite gotten there yet. Across 12 starts, 5.27 skill interactive ERA. A lot of walks, not enough strikeouts. And the Pirates in general, I think, are a fine team, honestly. They're nothing to be super concerned about, especially when you give them a competent pitcher like Rich Hill. They're up, out there on the bump. So again, this one has shifted to minus 116. Uh, it was minus 110 earlier, but I think there's still enough value there to feel good about. I'm about uh, three and a half percentage points above the implied odds. That's a big enough gap for me. So I do like the Pirates at minus 116 at FanDuel Sportsbook for tonight. As always, though, shop around and make sure uh, you can't get a lingering minus 110 out there somewhere else. 
Second money line is one that was good to us earlier on this week. That is the Cincinnati Reds. They are on the road taking on the St. Louis Cardinals. Right now, the Reds' money line is plus 150, so their implied odds to win are 40%. I've got this game at 47% in favor of the Reds. So I'm pretty far off market, which is never a super fun feeling, but I also understand why my model is high in the Reds. Ben Lively is starting here for the Reds, and I like a lot of what he has done so far. He's made four starts, and I think some of the numbers for Lively, or sorry, five starts for Lively, I think some of the numbers for him probably going to regress a bit because his strikeout number at 22% or his strikeout mark is higher than you would think it would be based on the swinging strike rate he has gotten. So I want to bring that down a bit and assume some regression for Lively there. But the hard hit rate allowed is also pretty good. His skill interactive ERA is 3.75. So he's pitched pretty well. Facing off against Jordan Montgomery here. Montgomery, I liked a lot of what he did last year when he came to the Re- the Cardinals, kind of changed up his approach, uh, was willing to throw his fastball a bit more. This year hasn't quite been the same. 4.27 skill interactive ERA for him in seven starts with fewer four seamers, more sinkers and changeups. It's fine. Hard contact rate is still pretty good. So he's, he's done that one thing. But now facing a Reds team that is honestly kind of fun with all the the young guys they've added, with all the firepower they've added. And again, Ben Lively is pitching decently well. So the Reds money line plus 150, I've got them again around 47% to win. So I might be too high on them. But again, some wiggle room there if I am too high to still be above the market. So the two money lines I like for today, the Pirates at minus 116 taking on the Mets and then the Cardinals or the Reds at plus 150 taking on the Cardinals. That's all that we have here for this show over on Covering the Spread. But again, back later on today to break down the Belmont Stakes with Christina Blacker of FanDuel TV. She, of course, was on with us before the Preakness, and she called National Treasure to win. So uh, hopefully we can duplicate that with Christina in a really tough field for today. We'll talk about that later on. Big thank you once again to Rob Freeman. A true delight to have him back on the show here for today. Once again, follow him on Twitter. If you're not already at pitching ninja and check out all of his work. And again, at FanDuel sports, but can check out that daily strikeout uh, market. Cause it is a lot of fun. Huge fan that FanDuel is offering that market right now. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your bets for tonight. Uh, good luck to Merrill Kelly. Hopefully you can rack up that 21 to 1 win for Rob. We'll talk to you all once again later on today to talk about the Belmont. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. <laughs>